And now then, gentlemen of the Allen Company, you see before you a man happier than a little bird upon a bough. I am retiring. I'm leaving the Allen Company in your hands. Yes, gentlemen, I shall devote my future days to ensuring the happy marriages of my two lovely daughters, Phyllis and Gracie. As for myself, my long-delayed dream is now a reality. I shall return to the scenes of my childhood without a care on my mind. to obey you like a five-year-old child. Ramon loves me and I love him. It's the only beautiful thing in my life and you can't stop us from marrying. I tell you, Phyllis, he's a fortune hunter, a parasite, a leech. I won't let you talk that way about Ramon. Oh, Phyllis, he doesn't love you. Sure, I love her. I love her for your money, you big, fat idiot. <laughs> Ever marry one of your daughters if she didn't have money. Phyllis, Phyllis, did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he called me? But Come on, come on, hurry. Bobart, come right up here. You phone, sir? Make some noise when you come into a room. Don't tiptoe like a ghost. Do something. Get squeaky shoes. Yes, sir. Well, why are you standing there looking more stupid than usual? You sent for me, sir. Oh, yes, yes. Get my daughter, Phyllis. Uh, begging your pardon, sir. She's not home yet. What? Well, where is she? Out with Mr. Del Ramos, mm. sir. Making the rounds, as the fella says. Fella? What <laughs> fella? Why, just the fella. <laughs> Figure of speech, as it were. Yeah, that settles it. Get my secretary, Mr. Bowen. Well, if you don't mind my saying so, sir, it's 3 a.m. Of course I don't mind your saying so. If it's 3 a.m., say so. But get Burns. Wake him up. Yes, sir. And Bart, next time you enter a room, make a noise. Can you whistle? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, then you whistle when you walk around. Yes, sir. Now, now, Mr. Allen Bear there, take it easy. It's just something you ain't. Get back in bed, and I'll get you some bicarbonate. Well, I, 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 this is no nightmare. I'm awake. I haven't slept for six months. 
I haven't had a night's sleep ever since I retired. Burns, we've got business to attend to. Business? Huh. At this hour? Oh, why, Mr. Allen, you, you, you sold your business. Your worries are over. Yeah. You're worth a million. Yes, that's just it. But Raymond Del Raymond says is trying to get Phyllis and take it away from me. He told me just now, right there in that wall. Stop it, stop it. I'm sane. I'm awake. I know what I'm doing. You never get one penny of my money. I'll turn it all over to Gracie. But you can't let Gracie handle any money. You know how she is, Mr. Allen. Well, for sake of argument, we'll say she's uh, odd. <laughs> she is, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Oh, but she's a great gal, Burns. She's a great gal. Uh, she's very fond of you, too. You ought to see more of her. It'd make me very happy. Now, let's not bring that up again. I'm a bachelor. And I like being a bachelor. And the more I see of Gracie, the more I'm determined to remain a bachelor. Uh, but you don't understand her, Burns. You don't understand her. I don't understand her. No. I don't. Uh, have you seen this? Yesterday's paper. Uh, just one of her harmless little jokes. Harmless? Uh. How about this? Harmless? Absolutely harmless. There's no use, Burns. I've got some rest coming and I'm going to get it. I'm going to turn everything over to Gracie for, uh, say, 60 days. But, Mr. I Allen... mean it. Now, you give out stories that I've suddenly gone broke. Go out and get some witnesses, anybody you can find. I'm going to go through with this before I let anyone change my mind. But, Mr. Allen... Come on, now, then. Fellas, come with me and you'll each get ten bucks. Ten, ten bucks. bucks? Oh, we're going to get ten bucks. Ooh. Hey, any... what's going on here? Come on, you're just in time. Yeah. You get ten bucks. Yeah, just in time. Well, here are your witnesses, Mr. Allen. A cop, a milkman, and uh, those two fellas. Uh, very good, Burns. Stop that! Yes, sir. Well, where's Miss Gracie? Is she out, too? No, sir. She's in her room, sir. <laughs> well, why doesn't she answer her telephone? I don't know, sir. Well, come on, then, all of you. We'll go to her room. Gracie. 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 Hello. Uh, hello. Gracie. Hello. Oh, it's you, Papa. Hello. Gracie, what were you doing with that book under the bed? Well, somebody told me to read Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. Gracie, I'm not on the telephone. Operator. Operator, he hung up. Gracie, I'm here in this room, not on the phone. Well, it certainly is a small world. Come on, come on. Oh, George, I'm reading the most wonderful mystery. I know, Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, well, I did that. Uh, you know, whenever I read a book, first I read the beginning, and then I read the ending, and then I start in the middle and read towards whichever way I like best. Come on, we've got business to attend to. Come on. I, Harrison Allen, Party of the first part, transfer all my worldly possessions to my daughter, Gracie Allen, party of the second part. A party? Yeah, party of the second part agrees to turn back said possessions to party of the first part 60 days after date. Oh, that's why you all came in. We're having a party. Oh, that's awfully sweet of you to surprise me like that. Here, just sign this. Oh, all right. What's that? You signed Hilda. This is a legal document, and you've got to sign your right name. Oh, don't be a silly, will you? You never sign your right name in a legal document. That's forgery. All right, just sign Gracie Allen, and I don't want to have any trouble with you. Yeah, oh, um, Gracie Allen, and I don't want to have any don't trouble. Don't sign, I don't want to have any trouble with you. Oh, you don't want to have any trouble with me, Look, huh? stand over there. Oh. Will you please sign this? Now, look, Gracie, I'm your father's legal advisor, but I didn't advise this. I'll explain it to you, but you won't understand. Ah, 
Aw, George, you wanted to say things like that when we're alone. Well, let's start all over again. You just signed a paper, remember? Yeah. That paper made your father poor, but nobody is to know about it. He has no money. Do you understand? No. No? No. Oh, Papa's a millionaire. No, he is not. He was. You've got all his money. We must pretend he's broke. Oh, and I'm to see that we're poor, huh? That's it. Oh, oh George, isn't this lots of fun? We'll be around every night for the same price. <laughs> this way, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Good, night. Good night. Good night, pal. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good work, friends. Good work. Oh, Papa, I'm so sorry you're poor and I've got all the money. But I think I'll cut my allowance in half because I'm not going to be as silly as you were and pay me as much money as you paid me. No wonder you're poor. You see, Burns? Gracie understands the value of money. I knew I could depend on her. Georgie, how much money do you get? Your father pays me $400 a month. Oh, well, it's 200 now. <laughs> Listen, you're not going to let her get away with this, are you, Mr. Allen? I I'm sorry, but it's all her money. My hands are tied. <laughs> well, what do I look like? Do I look like a fool? Oh, Georgie Porgy, you're self-conscious. Well, good night. I'm going back to bed. Well, what on earth could they be doing here at this hour? But who are those people? They seem to be some sort of witnesses, Miss Phyllis. Witnesses? What's happened? Uh, I think the master will tell you that, sir. But why are you whistling? Orders from the master, miss. Well, stop it. Very good, miss. Bart, haven't you shown those people out yet? Uh, they've gone, sir. It's Miss Phyllis. Now, tell her to come up. Well, uh, Mr. Del Ramos is with her, sir. Then I'll come down. Young man. Did you mean what you called me on the wall over the bed? Uh, I mean, uh, that is... Uh, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Uh, never mind that now. What's the meaning of bringing my daughter home at this hour? Oh, I apologize, Mr. Allen. But after all, this isn't so very late in view of the fact that uh, Phyllis has consented to marry me. Marry you? Well, may I ask what you two propose to live on, Mr. Del Ramos? Uh, I... Uh, I intend to go to work soon. Well, you know my allowance, Daddy. Oh, your allowance, eh? Well, suppose I told you there isn't any allowance. Suppose I told you that I'm broke penniless. Would that make any difference to either of you? Why, of course it wouldn't make any difference. <laughs> but it's absurd to think of it. Well, I was just supposing. Do you love my daughter? Why, well, of course I do. Why? Why, I, I love her for... Uh, for, for what? Uh, uh, I love her for herself. Uh, well, that's not what you told me. Told you? I don't understand. Uh, well, I understand, young man. Good night. But Mr. Del Ramos is leaving. See you tomorrow. Good night, darling. Good night, darling. Daddy, you were awfully mean to Ramon. Mean nothing. Now, he's only after my money, and you know it. That's not true. Well, I happen to know better. Oh, let's not go over all that again. Now, now, Phyllis, now, sit down. Now, listen, you don't want to marry a man who doesn't love you, do you? Of course I don't, Daddy. But Ramon loves me. Well, we'll see if he does. Now, I'm going away for a couple of months. I'm giving out word that I've gone broke. Now, if Ramon still loves you, thinking that I haven't got a dime... Then I'll consent to your marriage. Now, that's fair, isn't it? That's fair enough. But, Daddy, how are you going to actually make people believe that you're broke? Just saying so won't do it. Yeah, but I am. I've turned over all my money to Gracie. Do you mean every time I want any money, I have to ask Gracie for it? Well, that's what I have to do. <laughs> She'll surprise you. Yes, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> there, there. Now, everything's going to be all right. Good night. Good night. Yours, boss? Yeah. Put in drawing room A. Wait a minute. You have no drawing room. You have upper berth three. What? I thought I told you. I know, but Gracie bought the tickets. She has the money. Upper berth three. All listen to upper berth? I'll do my best, boss. Well, now I think that's carrying things just a little too far. You're lucky you're not sleeping in the baggage car. Mm. It was your idea. 
Look what she did to me. We must find something to give Daddy. Oh, I have your worm. Do I have a... What was that again, please? Uh, worms, on account of Papa's going fishing, and we didn't have any worms around the house. Lady, this is a cigar counter. Oh, don't be silly. You can't catch fish with cigars. Don't you think you better reconsider this before it's too late? Now, don't worry about Gracie. She'll be all right. I'm leaving her in your hands. <laughs> she's all yours. You're leaving her in my hair, and she's not all mine. Hello, Daddy. Oh, hello, Phyllis. Uh, where's Gracie? She'll be here in a minute. Oh! Well, now, Phyllis, take good care of yourself. And don't forget your promise. I won't, Daddy. You have a good time, and don't yeah. you worry about anything. Oh, hello, Papa. Back already? Your Papa is not back. He didn't go anyplace. He's just leaving. Oh, well, then why am I saying hello to him? That's what I'd like to know. We're all saying goodbye, but you're saying hello. All aboard. Gracie, I'm counting on you. And you too, Phyllis. Stop it. Gracie, I'll see you at home. All right, bye. <laughs> Uh, here's a little going away present from Phyllis and me and that man over there. Gracie, I'm not your father and I'm not going away. I don't know why, but I'm staying here with you. Well, if everybody's going to hang around the train, I can't tell who's leaving. Besides, there are no cigars in the box. Well, I thought if people saw Papa smoking $25 cigars on the train, it'd look funny since he's so poor, eh, Judge Apartee? Yeah, it's always funny for people to be smoking cigars out of an empty box. Yeah, well, goodbye, Judge Apartee. Goodbye. Yeah. Have a nice trip. Goodbye. Come on, get off the train. It's your father that's making the trip. <laughs> I knew it was one of us. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye, Harry. Oh, goodbye, Harry. Hello, Hello, Harry. Harry, I want you to meet George. Hello, how George. Do you do? Well, Harry, how have you been? Fine. And how are you folks? Fine. Oh, that's lovely. Are you going uptown? Yes. Oh, good. Then we'll drop you off. Uh, George, give Harry the keys to your roadster. All right. Well, we'll be seeing you, Harry. Right, goodbye. Right, goodbye. George, who's that? Who's that? Yes. Yo, George, wait for Cookie. It sure gets me how anyone can work for 40 years to become a millionaire and then want to keep it a secret. <laughs> but you always wear a strange duck pie, please. <laughs> well, I got my reason, Stubby. I came down here to rest and fish and rest. <laughs> hey, Wilbur, look who's here. <laughs> it's Harrison, Wilbur. Old pie face. Well, well, slap my hips with a buggy whip. <laughs> well, well, Wilbur, if I ain't glad to see you. How are you, Stinky? Oh, hey, my old wrestling pal, hey? Remember how I used to put your shoulders on the mat, hey? <laughs> I used to put your shoulders on the mat. Hey. I think I could do it again. Well, I don't think you can. Hold my glasses. Give up? You're the winner, Wilbur. I can understand you're giving away the show plan. But why did you have to give away the Rolls Royce? Yeah, well, you can't be poor and have a chauffeur. And he'd been with the Rolls Royce so long, I hated to separate them. Gracie, we're only pretending to be poor. You keep this up and you'll have us all in the breadline. Oh, Georgie, if you keep hinting like that, one of these days I'm going to take you up on it. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you feel well? I've never seen that expression in your face before. No, I'm thinking. Oh, well, maybe that's it. Yeah, oh, uh, stop. I don't wish to interrupt, but uh, this is my wife. Yeah, oh. Oh, how do you do? This is Mr. Burns. Stand up. Stand up. Think. Thinking with what? Yeah, well, I was thinking, Georgie Porgy, if we're going to be poor, we ought to really do something about it. And I was thinking, if you'd stop thinking, we'd all be better off. Oh, thank you. Isn't it sweet of him to let me read his paper? You don't know this man. Give him back his paper. Well, that all right. He doesn't know me either. I'll read it out loud, and then we'll both save time. Act is hungry. Act is hungry. It's a well-known fact that the hungriest people in the world are actors. Hundreds of them in New York are homeless and without food, and something should be done about it. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Hundreds of actors are hungry, so it's wonderful. Yeah, well, I'm glad you agree with me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, come on, George. We've got to get off here. Quick, I've got an idea. <clears throat> but if you don't mind, may I have my paper?
Oh, keep still, Bob. Well, begging your pardon, Miss Gracie, you, you stabbed me twice already. Oh, there, Bach. Now, isn't that lovely? You look like a beggar. Make me look poor. Uh, cut me about 50%. Oh, goody. Oh, aren't we having fun, Bach? <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get to my mink coat. Uh, by the way, Bach, did you break those windows? Uh, all the side ones, miss. I, I haven't gotten around to the front ones yet. Uh, and did you fix the roof so it would leak? Well, not yet, miss. I, I've been too busy planting weeds in the front garden, like you told me. Oh, well, when you finish, Bart, be sure and get some moss to eat the rug. Get big ones. I I'll talk to them myself when they get here and tell them what I want. Very good, miss. Oh, thank you, Bart. Now I'm going in the kitchen and make the cook go barefoot. What happened today, Botts? Today was the worst of all, sir. Well, we'll have... Why, Botts, you look like a tramp. I, I'm supposed to, sir. It's Miss Gracie's idea. I... I trust that's an old suit you're wearing? And she won't have to come... What's that? You simply have to see it to believe it, sir. Botts, you're turning white. What is it? Actors, sir. Actors? Hundreds of them. Miss Gracie's been about collecting them. Why? What do we want with actors? Miss Gracie said she read in the variety where thousands of them were hungry and homeless. So she brought them here to eat us out of house and home? The idea, sir. The place is a madhouse. The bouncing Baxters, the happy Hansons, Morgan's merry minstrels, and lots of others. They're all here, and not a good one in the lot. Snort dog, sir. They have Miss Gracie's room, sir. Gracie's room? Gracie, what? Wait, stand still, Josh. Stand what still. Are you... There, now, you're poor. Gracie, Gracie, tell me what this is all about, and then we can send for a straitjacket. Oh, isn't it thrilling, Georgie Pargy? They're all actors. Now, Papa, I'll be good and broke. You mean that all these Baxter snorts are living here? Yeah, and they like it. Not one of them has complained yet. Ooh, wait till you see how hungry they are. Hey, where's the dizzy dame that runs this joint? Oh, here I am. Where do you want this stuff? Well, I'll take it upstairs to the bathroom at the end of the hall and put it in the tub. Yeah, oh, he's cute, isn't he? Quiet. Gracie, why do you have to put ice in the bathtub? Well, Gladys is in the bathtub, and she can't live in warm climates. Well, I know I shouldn't ask this, but who is Gladys? Well, Gladys... Oh, you don't know anything, do you, George? Uh, no. Gladys is Thompson's trained seal. Oh, oh, well, now I feel better. For a minute, I thought it was Pilsner's performing polar bears. She, oh, well, they're out in the backyard. The... Dinner is served. <laughs> Well, I'm certainly not going to beg you to come in. You've been acting strange all evening. Well, it's humiliating to have you continually harping on the same subject. But you haven't even tried to find a job. Of course I have, darling. I don't think your father would want one of his daughters married to a man with just any old job. But, Ramon, I've told you, father's really broke. That's pretty hard to believe. There is something behind it all. Maybe there is. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll call you. All right. 
Good night. Good night. Hi, up there. Ah, hi, you buddy. Don't you remember Nicholas and me? We were the witnesses. You ain't giving away any more ten dollars, are you? Say, how's the little girl with all the money? What money? You were witnesses to what? We were both here the night that old man Allen signed all his money over to his daughter. And we thought if we came back, maybe we'd get ten dollars again. Uh, you, you, you say you witnessed Mr. Allen signing all his money over to his daughter? Sure. You mean his daughter, Phyllis? Well, I don't know what her name was, but she's the one that used to sleep on the floor. But I don't know nothing about mind reading. Nobody else does. It's all a fake. All you have to do is tell her what I told you. Yeah, but how do I get in the joint? It's a cinch. Why, it's like a home for rundown actors. Anybody can get in. Yeah? You just put on this outfit I bought you. And ask for Miss Gracie Allen. Tell her you're Abdul Abdullah, who used to be a mind reader in Vaudeville. And as soon as I get in the house, I get her in a corner, whip out the cards and tell her fortune. That right? There you are, cutie. That means good luck. The jack of spades. A dark, handsome man is going to cross your path. Dude, why is he wearing that funny hat? That's the hat the jack of spades wears. Why? Because he... Uh, Let's start again. What's this? Just like I taught. A horse. Putting two and two together, you're going to meet a dark, handsome man on a horse on a bridal path. Oh. Th Keep your mitts off them cards. What's this? Just like I taught. The sun is shining. That means if you go riding early tomorrow morning, you'll meet the love of your dreams. And besides, it's the tree of hearts. That means you'll know your Romeo when you see him, because he'll be carrying a handkerchief. He's got a cold, huh? Yes, he's got a... Why don't you listen and let me talk? Oh, well, now I'll tell your fortune. Who's the Hindu, me or you? Well, now don't tell me. Let me think. Um, Don't think. Just remember this. He'll be waving a handkerchief up and down three times. Now, you got that straight? Oh, of course. I go on the bridal path, and I meet my Romeo, and he'll wave his horse up and down, and... Oh, no, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'll go on the bridal path, and I'll meet you, and you'll wave Listen, your... Listen, lady, I ain't going no place. He'll be riding the horse, and he'll be waving the handkerchief. Now, let's see. Where did I... I heard that someplace. Someplace for either a magazine or a book. You or... didn't read it in no book. I've been trying to tell it to you for the last two hours. Oh, that's where I heard it. <laughs> yeah, that's where you heard it. Morning, Chang. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Cat no got tongue. Miss Gracie, catch him goat. Were you sleepy last night? On a park bench. Saunders trained skunk has my room. Where did you sleep? Me sleepy in laundry tub. Breakfast is served.
Good morning, Miss Gracie. Your coffee. Oh, I really shouldn't drink coffee in the morning. It keeps me awake all day. You, what are you staring at, Bob? Uh, the writing habit, Miss Gracie. Oh, it's not a habit. It's the first time I've ever done it. I put them on last night so I'd be all ready this morning to go riding. You know how early horses get up. Begging your pardon, Miss Gracie, you've never been on a horse. But that new Hindu fortune teller who came yesterday after Labdom and told me that if I went riding this morning in Central Park, I'd meet the man of my dreams. Oh, isn't love cute? It is indeed, Miss Gracie. Good morning, Mr. Burns. Graham. Mr. Burns. Good morning, Mr. Burns. Time to get up. What a night. What a night. Bots, did you bring my coffee? I had it, sir, but what with all Miss Gracie's guests? Guests? And it's not all a dream? They're really here? In every nook and corner, sir. Did you sleep in the park again last night? Yes, sir, and quite a relief it is, sir. What with only the birds and traffic and things. Oh, I think I'll join you tonight, Bart. Well, what's this? Who's this sleeping in my bed? Who do you think, the tree bears? Oh, so the cards say if I sleep on the canopy, there'll be a change in things around here, huh? Why don't you guys pipe down and let a fella get some sleep? Go on, beat it. Box, kick that guy out of my bed and see that he doesn't get in again. Well, I, I don't like to admit this, Mr. Burns. I, I seldom go in for such things, but that... Abdul Abdullah told me that if he didn't get the best feather bed in the house, some dire calamity would befall me. Oh, I see. Now what? Oh, that's the Montana Melody Makers, sir. They have Mr. Allen's room. Uh, here, though. playing at this unearthly hour. They're rehearsing, sir. Rehearsing for what? They haven't worked in 10 years. <laughs> I shudder to tell you this, but Miss Gracie thought, with all these actors in the house, that she would produce a show. Gracie is producing a show? The heads up. Stand still or someone's gonna get hurt. Don't tell me that he's rehearsing, too. Yes, sir. All of them. They're all over the house. But these actors have been in nothing but flops. That's why they're living here. If Gracie produces a show with them, she'll lose her shirt. That seems to be her plan, sir. But isn't there some place in this house where I can get a woman's peace and rest? You might try the guest bathroom at the end of the hall, sir. I don't think anyone knows about that. Thanks, Bots. You're a pal. Say, what do you think this is? Gladys is very sensitive. And she doesn't like noises when she's eating. And I'd appreciate it very much if you'd get out of here. You oh. get that? Graham, wait. I'm sorry, dear. Uh -oh. telegraph office. Hello. I want to send a telegram to Harrison Allen, Clarksville, North Carolina.
you're the tall, dark, handsome man of my dreams. Oh, isn't that nice? I was so afraid I'd have to fall in love with somebody I didn't know. I had no idea you felt this way about me, Miss Gracie. I am indeed flattered. Oh, well, I can't fall in love like this. Either you come down or I'll come up. No, 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 no. I, I come down. Oh, all right. <laughs> Miss Gracie, I am afraid fate has thrown us together at last. Oh, isn't it funny? We were in love all the time, only we didn't know it until a horse brought us together. But Gracie, my darling, I knew it all the time. I was living a lie with Phyllis, knowing in my heart it was you I wanted. Oh, well, I guess I'm the happiest woman in the world next to Papa. Ours is the perfect love. We'll share everything together. Here he comes with some food, and I'm starved, too. I managed to snitch Abdul Abdullah's breakfast, and I would advise that we be very quiet. Oh, this is utterly ridiculous. Three grown people allowing this to happen. Imagine me being chased out of my room by the Georgia Jubilee Singers. Did you ever take a bath with a seal? But there must be some way out. Couldn't you ask Governor Lambert to intercede? I remember your father was very friendly with him. Well, I could put a stop to this. Father was right about Ramon. He hasn't been around all week, and I'm through with him. All I'd have to do is tell Daddy this. Well, why didn't you say so? That's what we've been waiting for. Well, why can't we go down and tell him and bring him back? Phyllis, why can't you go alone? But I haven't a dime. But isn't there something in this house that you could sell? I think I could just about raise the money for Miss Phyllis's fare out of Thompson's train seal and perhaps one or two of the plug snort dogs. I love you. Again? I love you. Why didn't you tell me love was like this? What's the matter? I love you, but I'm getting a bit sick. Oh, goody, goody, you love sick. I'll go out and buy an engagement ring, and you come over the house tonight, and we'll announce our elopement. Goodbye, my dream lover. Goodbye, Pookie. We'll have to think of something else. Oh, stop worrying. We can always count on dear old Bob. Here it is, Miss Phyllis. Just enough for a one-way ticket and 30 cents left over for knickknacks. Hurry. Just bring your father back if you have to hard time. But where on earth did you get the money? Well, I, I'd rather not go into that at the moment, Miss Phyllis. You barely have time to make the train. Well, why, your father, that you're coming? Maybe he'll believe that. Goodbye, Bob. Thanks for the money. Goodbye, and good luck, Miss Phyllis. Oh, Mr. Bartz, have you seen Gladys? Gladys? Yes, my pet seal. I can't find her. She never strayed away from home before. And she was so happy here. Uh, have you looked in the East River, sir? East River? You don't think... Oh, oh don't worry, sir. She must be somewhere about the oh. place. Uh, have you tried the kitchen? Oh. You know, we're having fish today. Oh, Gladys. Gladys. Wait for me. Yes, take your time. There's no hurry. But this is where you asked me to drive you. Oh, never mind apologizing. I'll wait. Lady, you told me to drive you to 614 Park Avenue, and this is it. Oh, all right, we'll both go in. Uh, one dollar, please. Yeah. Oh, you keep the money. It was lots of fun riding around with you. Lady, I, I got a wife and six kids. Well, now, isn't that a coincidence? I'm in love, too, and I'm going to be married soon. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Yes. <laughs> Never mind about the dollar. 
Here you are, lady. For me? Oh, thank you. That was awfully sweet of you. I won't open them until Christmas. Hello, Daddy Party. What's the idea in kidding that driver? It's true, Georgie Party. I just bought the wedding ring and my complete torso. Wait, I'll put it on for you. Here, wait a minute. Cut that out. Are you insane? Yes. Go on, get inside. Get inside. Go on. What is this I hear about you getting married? Oh, isn't it wonderful, Georgie Porgy? And I didn't even know I was in love myself until he told me. He? Yeah. Who's he? Well, you know him, Ramon Del Ramos. Ramon Del Ramos? Yeah, oh, I knew you'd be happy about it because he was going to marry Phyllis and now he doesn't have to. Oh, don't tell me that you fell for that guy's line of chatter. Oh, if you could hear him on a horse and see the pretty things he says. He... <sighs> so, uh... That's your trousseau, huh? Yeah, oh, won't he look sweet in it? Yes, he... Now, look, Gracie, I'm sleeping on a canopy. Bots are sleeping in the park. We haven't got 25 cents between us. Dogs are in the bed. We're going through all of this to get rid of Del Ramos. Yeah, oh, it was not. It was to get rid of Papa's money so Phyllis could marry him. <laughs> to feed the actors, miss. Oh, uh, have they got enough to eat, Bots? Well, they're fattening up, miss. What with three meals a day. Oh, but we've got to get poor quicker because I'm in love and I'm going to be married. Oh, Bots, did you ever step on an oyster in your bare feet? I'm afraid I've never had that adventure, miss. Yeah. Oh, well, then you've never been in love. <laughs> Wonderful Georgie Porgy. He's going to be the star of my show. What do you think? Just lost my mind. Oh, what a shame. Where did you have it last? What gets my nanny is he... He still claims he's got money. I wouldn't have minded if he just said honest-like that he'd come down here to live often us. Has he been fed today? I'm through feeding him. I traded him a box of crackers yesterday for his nibbling. Now I got all his golf clubs and I can't sell one of them. Now, Clyde, please. Now, this is the only favor I'll ever ask of you. Won't you let me read my telegram? Nothing doing, pie face. It come collect. And 60 cents is 60 cents. Phyllis! Well, what in the world are you doing here? Daddy, I'd like to speak to you alone. <laughs> now, listen, Daddy. You've got to come home with me right away. Gracie's carrying this poverty business too far. We're all humiliated beyond endurance. Well, you know what we're doing it for. Well, that's what I came all the way down here to tell you. You were right about Del Ramos. Yeah. I'm through with him forever. You mean that? Cross my heart, Daddy. Mm. Well, now you're talking sense. Come on, let's go home. I've been having a terrible time here anyway. What in heaven's name is the matter with Gracie? She hasn't sent me a dime since I've been here. Well, that's just it, Daddy. She has this idiotic idea that we should look poor. Oh, we had a hard time scraping up enough money for me to get down here. What, you mean that you're broke, too? I have four cents. Holy smoke! Keep quiet about it around here. 
Come on, let's, let's phone Gracie to wire us money to get home on. I'll tell her a thing or two. Now, keep quiet. I'll leave everything to me. Boys, uh, uh, my daughter's just brought me important news. I've got to go with the center bill to telephone my bankers uh, in New York. Well, uh, here's your bill, Pie Face. Just like I thought, uh, $162.12. Uh, uh, oh, well, I'll take care of it as soon as I get back. Oh, uh, that's all right. Take your time, Harrison. Uh, Wilbur, how about giving us a lift to Centerville, eh? Sure. It's a good five hours' drive, but I'll be glad to take you. <laughs> get in, Daddy. Hello. Allen residence? Yeah, well, give me Gracie's room. Hello. Hello, Greg. I am Mr. Fluxnort. Mr. Flug what? Please, don't shout like that. I can hear you. Oh, you want to talk to Miss Allen? All right, I'll call her. Miss Allen? Miss Allen? Yeah? It's for you. Oh, all Somebody right. Somebody wants to talk with you. Oh, thank you. Hello? Hello. Oh, oh Papa. Oh, I didn't know you were back. Oh, uh, are you in bed with the flug snorts? No, I'm not in bed with the flug snorts. I'm not in bed with anybody, see? Uh, I'm in Centerville with Phyllis, and we're flat broke. And you've got to send us money to get home on. But, Papa, you can't come home by train. You're supposed to be poor. It won't look right. Now, you better send me the money right away. It's my money. Uh, Papa, don't shout like that. You'll wake up all the dogs. Good night. I wake up the what? You... Oh... Hello, hello! Hey! Hey, what's going on here? Gracie's idea, sir. They're tearing the house apart. But they can't do this. They're doing it, sir. It's tough enough to live in this house the way it is. Why are they tearing it down? Miss Gracie is transforming the house into a theater, sir. For her show, you know. She'll transform us into lunatics. Why are they changing the house into a theater? She said something about people always leave home to go on the stage. So she's bringing the stage to the home. Well, for her, that's pretty sensible. Just keep on going. It's 614. Now get this, fella. You'd better be Harrison Allen, see? I was dumb enough to bring you two all the way from Delaware. You already owe me 118 bucks. Now you've got nothing to worry about, young man. I assure you I am Harrison Allen. You'll get your money the moment we arrive. This has been the worst experience I've ever had. I'll be so glad to get home. I'll never speak to Gracie again. Well, we must be almost there. Phyllis. Phyllis, look! What's going on there? Who are all those people? What's happened to my home? Hey, buddy, where's my doll? Now you'll get it. Come on. Who in the world is that? Looks like a tramp. Where do you think you're going? Uh, this is my house. Let me in. Come on, come on. Get out of here. I gotta get in here. Let me in. Please, officer, we must get in. Well, where are your tickets? Tickets? That's what I said. If you got reservations, your tickets well, are over there. So you're Harrison Allen, huh? And this is your house. It's a theater. Come on, give me my door. I'll knock you into little pieces. Now, you'll get it. Give me two oh. tickets and hurry up. You! Get out of there. What are you doing there? Get out of my house. Do you have reservations? Reservations, you imbecile. You give me two tickets and shut your mouth or I'll shut it for you. Why don't you suck them in the nose? Officer. 
throw these men out. Sold out, Miss Adams. Oh, Georgie Porgy, isn't it awful? Ramon promised to marry me right after the show tonight. And now I'll be so rich, Papa won't let me marry him. Oh, and I, I charged $20 just so nobody would come. If people pay $20 to see this show, they'll sue us for using a theater to defraud. You know, I wired Shakespeare to come and see me play Juliet, but he didn't even answer. He didn't, did he? No. I think he should get in free, don't you? Tracy, this is going to be a terrible shock to you, but Shakespeare has been dead uh, for over 300 years. He has. Well, time certainly flies. Don't you think so? I think so. My 118 bucks. I'll get into this house if it's the last thing I do. Come on, follow me. <laughs> Bam, bam, bam. 
It won't be long now, Broken Nose. If you stick around here, you'll have to marry that dame. Don't worry, there won't be any wedding bells. We're gonna get out of here in a jiffy. Oh, Mr. Policeman, my dream lover is in the box office, and he has to marry me tonight, and I'm so afraid he'll find out I'm such a good producer and run away. Well, what do you want us to do? Well, I want you to keep him until I finish Julietti. Okay, Miss Allen, we'll see that he doesn't get away. Yeah, I thank you. Smokes, boss, it's locked. Look! Open the door! Take it easy, kid. You ain't going anywhere. It's the cops. Hey, we're gonna get locked up for burglary. Oh, I'll just keep calm. The butcher. Uh, uh, Mr. Schultz, I want 22 pounds of round steak for the flug snort dogs. Yeah, a and a little of some other kind of meat for the other actors. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry I had to get you out of bed, Mr. Schultz, but I asked you to call me late at night because I wanted all dark meat. Yeah. All right, goodbye. Oh, he's the grandest man and a good butcher, too, if you ever need anything. <laughs> This is my wine cellar. I'll show you all my champagne. Oh! <laughs> you mean it used to be a wine cellar? There ain't nothing left. Oh, Daddy, this is terrible. They're all empty. Oh, when I find Gracie, I'll give her a piece of my mind. 
This is the way to the upstairs living room. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Romeo, wherefore art thou? Wherefore art I? <laughs> Everybody get out of here. Everybody get out of here. Get off my furniture. Go on home. Go on. <laughs> I'm no actor. <laughs> Deny thy father. That's what you've been doing, denying your father. And what's all this about Del Ramos? Oh, Papa, I'm going to marry him. You, Gracie, marry him? I'll, I'll... Oh, but Papa, aren't you happy? He's got a job and everything. The, uh, tis but thy name that is my enemy. <laughs> Give me my money. Keep quiet. Ah, oh, Gracie, daughter, stop it before I go out of my mind. Oh, I take thee at thy word. With love's light wings did I o'erperch these walls. Ah, go fry an egg. <laughs> away, man, away. Get off the stage. I, sir, am Romeo. Don't push me. Get off the stage. Why, you... <laughs> Gracie, you'll wreck my life and my home. Oh, Papa, if you're going to go around wearing beards, everybody will think you're Romeo. You, oh, uh, Romeo, Romeo. Stop it, stop where... it. Oh, Mr. Allen, I, I'm so sorry. I... But you look like a grasshopper. Yes, sir, yes, sir. You, you'll find me a changed man, sir. I do a bit of hoofing, a bit of drumming, fancy bike riding, and I'm quite handy at <laughs> tossing the dagger. I never should have left you. Oh, but there you are. Why did you let all this happen? Wait a minute. I don't know. Either I'm crazy or the whole world is. I've been doing nothing but answering phone calls and wires from Hollywood. They say Gracie is a genius. They want to give her $5,000 a week to come out there as a producer. Oh, but Papa, who'll take care of you and Phyllis and Georgie Porgy if I go to Europe? Europe? Hollywood's not in Europe. It's at the other end of the country. The only good thing about this whole business is that you're going to live there. Oh, Georgie Porgy, I warned you not to say all those nice things. Now you have to marry me. Oh, why don't you make my poor old heart happy and marry her, Burns? What? Well, your poor old heart might be happy, but mine would stop. Besides, she'll be living in Hollywood, and you'll be living in New York. It's the only part of it I like. Oh, Georgie Porgy, won't it be wonderful when I have to come to New York, you can take care of my business in Hollywood, and uh, then maybe your train might even pass my train, and you can wave to the children. Oh, it would be so nice for the children to see their papa once in a while. Don't you think so? I think so, Cookie. Might I suggest that this occasion seems to call for a kiss? Oh, sure. 